Disneyland isn't getting any cheaper these days, and food is one of the biggest expenses. That's why today I want to give you some tips on how to save money on food while at Disneyland. So let's get started. Let's start with the most affordable meals in the parks. In order to make this list, it needed to offer an actual meal with two items, not just like a snack. And it also needed to be $10 or less. And just a friendly reminder, I am just the messenger. Please do not tear me apart in the comment section about all of these ridiculous prices. I'm just trying to help you out. I do not set the prices. Now, a lot of the least expensive meals are hot dogs, but don't worry, if you're not a hot dog fan, I still have some options for you. Let's start with the absolute cheapest and we'll go from there. One of the cheapest places to get a meal is at Refreshment Corner in Disneyland proper, where you can get a hot dog and a bag of chips or a cutie orange for $8.79, or you can also get a chili cheese dog for $9.79. Just like many of the options we're going to be talking about today, Refreshment Corner offers mobile order and you can enjoy some live piano music while you eat in this area, so win-win there! You can also find hot dog meals for under $10 at Award Wieners in Hollywood Land in Disney California Adventure Park. Those ones will come with french fries. Or, if you want something more spicy, you can get an Angry Dog in Pixar Pier. And just down the boardwalk from there, you can get a hand-dipped cheese on a stick for $9.79 at the Corn Dog Castle. But let's see if we can find some meals under $10 that aren't hot dogs. Technically, you can get a slice of pizza at either Pizza Planet or the Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta in DCA, but it's not something I suggest because the pizza at both locations is not the best, and $9 for just one slice just doesn't hold a lot of value in my book. For just a dollar or two more, I'd rather get a pasta from these locations. Although they cost a little bit more, I feel like they hold their value and bring more bang for your buck. Now, if you're still wanting pizza, I would suggest getting the cheesy pizza flop over at Cafe Daisy. It's basically a personal sized pizza folded over into a taco with extra garlic and herbs and parmesan on the outside. It gets mixed reviews, but it's not a bad option when you're stuck in Toontown far away from other food options. If you're not wanting something so heavy, the cranberry pecan salad at the Jolly Holiday is a pretty good choice for $9.99. Or for $7.29, you can get a tomato basil soup with a breadstick, also at the Jolly Holiday, for those colder Disneyland days. And if you're a baked potato fan, you can get yourself a good-sized baked potato at the Troubadour Tavern by the Fantasyland Theater for $8.49. Another lighter food option would be the veggie wrap and fries at the Galactic Grill in Tomorrowland, which is a good option for vegetarians. This would be for $9.99. Lastly, if you venture out to Downtown Disney just a little, you'll find the quick service Earl of Sandwich. Everything at the Earl of Sandwich is less than $10 with sandwich, soup, wraps, and salads as your options. The second tip is to stay at a hotel that offers free breakfast. And there's quite a few in the surrounding area of Disneyland. Here are some of the hotels that are either walking distance to the parks or walking distance to a free parking shuttle to Disneyland. All these hotels are either pretty good stays to even really good stays. I know some of the prices look a little bit higher, but that's because they're either really close to the parks or they're suites with kitchens and can sleep more than four people in each room. Bottom line is, staying at any of these hotels is going to save you $10 to $20 per person for not having to buy breakfast in the parks.
If you don't have the option of free breakfast, I have a couple of ideas for you. Again, the Earl of Sandwich in downtown Disney, next to both park entrance gates. You'll find pretty good breakfast sandwiches for under $7 there. I especially suggest grabbing breakfast there if you're heading to DCA because there's no cheap breakfast options to no breakfast options in that park. In Frontierland in Disneyland, you can grab yourself a breakfast chimichanga for $6.99 at the ship to shore. And the Red Rose Tavern in Fantasyland has some pretty good breakfast options where you'll get a full breakfast for under $10. Now, drinks is one of the areas where you can unknowingly spend a ton of money if you're not expecting it. So if you're looking to save some money, this is most definitely one of the places to go. The very first thing you should know is water is free at Disneyland, so don't waste your money on buying $5 bottled waters. You can get free cups of ice water at any of the quick service food counters in Disneyland and DCA, or you can bring your own water bottle and just fill it up at any of the water filling stations. In Disneyland, those can be found in Frontierland by the Mercantile or Rancho de Zocalo, Toontown by the Bathrooms and by the Gadget Go Coaster, in Tomorrowland at the Galactic Grill, in Galaxy's Edge by either one of their bathrooms. The filling stations are a bit harder to come by in California Adventures. They have one at the Lucky Fortune Cookery and in Avengers Campus in the Ancient Sanctum area, randomly enough. I like to bring packets of liquid IV. You can find it at Costco or on Amazon, but it's little packets of electrolyte powder you can add to your water. To keep your electrolytes up while you're running around the parks all day, it actually makes a really big difference. And at almost seven bucks a pop, the fancy cold brew coffee drinks add up super fast. What a lot of people don't realize is you can get coffee for around $3 at almost every quick service eatery. The Jolly Holiday will even have options for more specialty drinks, but for less than a lot of those other fancy seasonal cold brews. Also, buying fountain drinks at the quick service eateries is going to be cheaper than buying bottled sodas at the snack stands most of the time. And some of those places have self-serve soda machines, so you can get a refill. Places like Rancho de Zocalo, Pizza Planet, Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta, and Pim's Test Kitchen all have this option. On the same note, snacks is another thing that's pretty overpriced at the parks. You'll find yourself spending over $5 for a 3-pack of mandarin oranges and $4 for a bag of chips. And if you're hitting the parks with little ones, a simple snack can be the one thing between a good day at the park and an epic meltdown. Trust me, been there, done that. So having a few snacks in your bag not only will help with keeping the hangries away, but it can also help you save big. Just remember to pack snacks that travel well. Don't bring anything that's going to melt and make a mess. Items that are easy to snack on while waiting in a line or watching a parade. Snacks can also help you save with not having to buy a bunch of kids meals, but we'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment because kids meals can be super pricey at Disneyland. And if you're liking this video so far, if it's helping you out, do me a massive favor and subscribe to my channel. It helps me out hugely and it keeps us connected. There's also some food items that you can switch out with others to save money but not lose on the tasty side of things. Starting with churros. Now, I love me a Disneyland churro. I really do. But at $5.50 a churro, it can really add up if you're buying for a family or a group. But some tasty treats come in packs of five or six, like the Goody Goody Donuts at Daisy's Cafe for only $6, or the Mickey Beignets at the Mint Julep Bar for only $9 for a six pack. So let's say you have a group of six, your cost goes from $33 for six churros to $9 for six beignets, which will save you $24. There's also some beautiful looking treats in the sweets cases in both parks that are really tempting to get, but can be very costly, starting with the caramel apples. They look so good, but can cost $13 and $14, ouch. But if you're a big caramel apple fan, 
You can also get a classic caramel apple for just seven and eight dollars instead. That's like a 40 to 50 percent savings for pretty much the exact same treat. And sadly, one of the items I hear everyone say is too expensive and not worth the money is the cake pops, which sit around seven dollars, and Rice Krispie treats that sit around seven fifty. These are tasty treats, but they seem to not hold value with their cost. But if you shop the same case, you'll find adorable and over-the-top treats for around $6 or less for desserts like cupcakes and cookies. And if you head over to the Jelly Holiday, you'll find baked goods that are just as good, if not better, than the Candy Palace treats that are $4 to $6 and leave you more satisfied for less money. On a similar note, a lot of people's kids will talk them into buying treats from those mobile treat carts, and I'm going to tell you, none of those items are going to live up to their prices. Like a bag of chips for $4? Yikes! It's way more worth it to just buy some popcorn for $5.75, or you can just buy some french fries for like the exact same price. And it can be frustrating to spend $6 on one of those popsicles only to have it melt all over your kid and make a mess. But for the same price, you can get a super tasty lemon or mango dairy-free soft serve in a cup or a cone for the same price, but it's way better from the adorable snowman on Pixar Pier. Or for slightly more, you can get a customizable hand-dipped ice cream bar at Clarabelle's that is way worth the $6. Or again, a customizable ice cream sandwich at the Gibson Girls Ice Cream Parlor. Your $6 will feel way more well spent at these places than they will at those silly little travel carts. Now let's talk bread. First, the pizza. Pizza at Disneyland is just okay and sometimes spending $9 a slice is just too much. So I suggest getting the garlic cheese bread from either Maurice's Treats or Idlewise Snacks. For $7.50, it's less than the pizza slices, but it tastes way better and is even more satisfying. And although I love me a Mickey pretzel, if you're buying pretzels for everyone in your family, $6 a pretzel can add up fast. But you can hop on over to Aunt Cass's in San Francisco to pick up an entire loaf of sourdough bread that was made right there. These loaves are very shareable and some of them are just as cute. You can get a basic loaf or a baguette for $6.50 or a character loaf for $12. I'd say one of these loaves equals three to four pretzels. And just like the Mickey pretzels, the sourdough bread is vegan as well, so everybody wins with this. Another way to save on food at Disneyland is to share. There's actually a lot of shareable options that may seem pricey, but when you know that it's actually big enough to share, and you think of the cost per person, it's not as bad. One of my favorite places to share and split meals at is the Plaza Inn. Not only is their fried chicken incredibly good, it's incredibly shareable. And sure, the price of $19.49 looks super pricey, but you get three pieces of fried chicken, mashed potatoes, a veggie side, and a buttermilk biscuit. Most definitely a meal big enough to share. And for those with gluten allergies, they have a complete separate menu and kitchen with similar options. So hip hip hooray for that. Another shareable chicken meal is the half chicken plate at Rancho de Zocalo, which is literally half of a chicken with rice and beans and a little tortilla. And again, you can also ask for a gluten friendly option here and they can accommodate you there. A lot of the dishes are quite big and shareable at Rancho, and they have a lot cheaper side options as well, so it's a good choice when you're keeping an eye on your budget. If you're in more of a burgers and fries mood, the burgers and sandwiches at Smoke Jumpers in DCA are positively enormous and very shareable at around $15 for a large burger with fries, and you can always add onion rings for $5.79 if you want or a milkshake if you really want to take it to the limit.
Now with the kids meals, I've discovered most of the time it's cheaper to get one adult meal and split it rather than buy two separate kids meals. Now the toddler meal is the cheapest option, but it's not at every eatery, and it is truly a toddler meal, it's quite small. So besides the toddler meals, the kids meals can actually really add up, and what you're paying extra for usually is just a small drink and a mandarin orange or applesauce. For instance, at the Lucky Fortune Cookery, instead of me getting my two kids each a chicken and rice kids meal, I can have them split a regular chicken teriyaki, I'll save $3, and they'll probably actually get a little bit more food. If your kids like chicken tenders, you can save big doing this hack at places like Smoke Jumpers, Stage Door, The Golden Horseshoe, and The Hungry Bear. Some other meals that are more friendly for young kids to share are spaghetti and meatballs at the Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta, mac and cheese at Aunt Cass Cafe, and hot dogs at Refreshment Corner or Ward Wieners. Basically, having your kids share a regular meal instead of buying a bunch of separate kids' meals can save you anywhere from $3 to $5 per meal, and that can really add up if you have a lot of kiddos or you're doing a multiple day trip. There's also snacks and treats that are shareable too. Of course, you have those massive turkey legs you can find in both parks. As long as you can get past the shame of carrying one of those things around, it's very shareable. Quantum pretzel at Pim's Test Kitchen is way shareable. Those Bavarian style pretzels that come with cheese sauce are big enough to share between three or four people. Plus it's really fun in there. Also at Pim's you have the Choco Smash candy bar that is like a really large Snickers that you basically need to use a knife to cut up. Two other sweet treats that are really tasty and very shareable are the large Mickey cookies. You can find them in any of the sweet shops. And who doesn't love a funnel cake when they're visiting a theme park? You'll find funnel cakes throughout Disneyland, all the way from powdered sugar to covered in ice cream and whipped cream and all kinds of toppings. They're fried, they're sweet, and they're very shareable. Speaking of shareable, if this video was helpful or even just fun to watch, will you share some love and give it a like? And you may also like this video on the right side of your screen. Thanks for watching and take care.